Hey guys, what's up? A little lonely Saturday night, a little bored, wide awake because I slept all day. So I figured I'd come out and talk to you guys. You know, um, great day, great couple days, man. It's crazy. You do these things and it's not planned. It just kind of happens and people come out of the woodwork that you haven't heard from in years. You know, um, <clears throat> Last night, a buddy called, and we were laughing about the times that we spent in the fucking cold tub playing Marco Polo, right? It, it's um, it's one of those things where you start talking about the history of your sports and injuries and the guys that were there from the beginning laugh about it. You know, it's just kind of what it is. Um, but it's been awesome catching up with some of the guys that I haven't talked to in, in years. You know, you kind of lose touch with all your high school friends. Um we all, cut, all go off on our own ways, right? Some go to college, some go to work. You know, I moved out of town. Uh, that's what's so great about social media. You know, you, you don't really have to talk to people, but you can kind of see what everybody's doing just by following along. So, um, yeah, it was awesome. A buddy from high school called me yesterday and said my wife works at a eye doctor. And she got me a contact that works um, just slightly different, but same size and everything. So it saves me probably four or five days, you know. Um, and again, let's be clear. Yesterday's rant or two days ago's rant had nothing to do with a contact lens. It's just the constant, always one step forward, two steps back, right? It, it It's one of those things where you start going through your old posts and you're laughing at like, doctor did this today another one another doctor then i got to a post from 2010 and i didn't even remember what happened it was another situation where i started a job at high sport club um and went from zero to off i mean uh, from 100 to off prednisone and i crashed uh my whole body went numb i had to pull over on route six and i ended up in the wareham hospital me and my dad had to go back and get my car the next day so it's it's been years of, you know, medications and ups and downs. And, you know, it, it's the hardest part about all of my health stuff is I try to do my best to hide it. You know, this podcast has changed. I mean, there's people that have heard things about me that I had no idea. You know, nobody knew I had, not nobody, but a lot of people didn't know I had rheumatoid arthritis. Um you know, you start talking and they're like, well, then how do you play golf all these years? And I'm like, you know, you, you kind of suck it up and, and you deal with the pain you can deal with. It's my feet. When my feet get bad and I'm off my meds, I have, have no chance. Um, when my feet aren't bad and <coughs> I'm on my meds, you know, yeah, I can I can walk 18 holes with a caddy. You know, carrying my bag is always going to be a struggle. Uh you know, I was thinking of something the other day we were talking last night. I can't remember the last time I ran, you know, and I don't mean like run to be active and exercise. I mean, like from here to there, like I can't, you know, once I'm going, I can't stop, you know. Um, so it takes me, if I'm running from here to the end of the car, it takes me almost two car lengths to finally slow down, stop and come back. So it's, you know, I can't remember. It was, it must've been sometime I was running after bogey being dumb, but um, yeah, he loved to run away from anybody. If he could get away from you, he would, but yet he couldn't survive on his own. So I don't get it. Um, but no, you know, like, like little things, little subtle things like being able to run, for enjoyment or run to chase something like I can't you know I was in the pool kind of running I'm like man I can't remember the last time I ran so you kind of wonder what's going on with my legs and my my medications and this that and the other thing but even when I'm on medication like I'm not 100% I'm never gonna be 100% um, I'm always gonna have pain I'm always gonna have bad knees you know this one's already doctors already kind of talking about replacement but we're not rushing that um but you know you, you laugh about some of the jokes that you have and some of the fights that you have right i mean it, it's I, it, just a lot of the times that i'm snapping 
is usually when I'm coming either off prednisone or been on prednisone for a while. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a steroid, you know, and I've never done anything mental health wise to deal with it. Um, I just kept taking it because it made me feel good because that's the only way I could function. You know, uh, it, it's now that I'm looking back on it, you know, obviously it took me to have a rough time October, November, and December. You know, the guys that were calling yesterday, um, crying about the contact, and, and then my buddy Kurt called. Um, <laughs> he wanted me to bring up something of our past. It, it's not worth going down that road. Um, it was a comedy act that we used to pull off, and, and it's probably not PC anymore, but back in 1996, you got away with it. So, again, it's not worth bringing it up. Um like what it was it's funny to bring it up but not talk about what it was it's just one of those things that it wasn't racist it wasn't anything like that but it's just one of those things you wouldn't do anymore so you know you, you get these people they start calling and they, they're worried about you and think you're gonna hurt yourself and one of the conversations i had with all of them was october november december maybe even into january february was when i kind of started coming out of it a little bit but that's when you needed to worry. When I was blogging, that was my fuck the world. I never have to see any of these people again. I don't give a fuck. I'm telling it like it is. And yes, it was honest and it was real. But at the same time, it, I don't really think I was that far off. It might not have been the best delivery, but the facts were all accurate. Everything I was talking about is true. So, I mean, it is what it is, you know, it's it just the frustrating thing for me is things take more energy for me to do than most people, you know, to get up and walk down the stairs to go to the bathroom and then walk back up the stairs to go to the bathroom is a pain in the ass if I'm staying somewhere where I, I don't have a bathroom on my floor, you know, um, it is, it's, it's just one of those things, you know, every time I get up to go do something, I'm going to take a deep breath. It's not a sigh. It's not a resenting groan it's a okay get ready for am i gonna put my feet down and are they gonna hurt right now or are they just gonna be normal so i'm always gonna be tired like i said with my z foot and my arthritis it's always feels like i've been on my feet for 12 hours um especially now when my legs are as skinny as they are it's just the energy you know, that it takes to do anything is tough. You know, when I'm on prednisone, it's like literally giving me a shot of adrenaline. Like I'm ready to go. Like, so your body makes five milligrams of prednisone a day or a chemical such as. So when you get on prednisone up to five milligrams, your body continues to produce that chemical. So when you get off prednisone you're still making five milligrams a day and it's not that big a change when i'm on what i'm on anything over 10 or five milligrams your body starts shutting down and it's okay while you're on prednisone but that's why you kind of wean off it right you you, you got to build that your body to get used to building its own so when i'm on 50 milligrams a day and every time i tell people this anybody that's been on prednisone is like you're on what but when I tell my doctor, he shakes his head and goes, yeah, I get it. But what they don't realize is it's like taking a handful of Motrin for you. As soon as the next day comes, if I don't take my prednisone, it's like I have nothing in my body. I have no pain killers in my body. My body doesn't produce its own and I'm in pain. So again, when you saw me yesterday or two days ago, rather, when I broke down, it was one of those things I had a great day planned. You know, I'm so close to finishing the Stony Lee episode and I think it's going to be cool. I think you guys are going to like it, but I got to do some filler stuff and a little, you know, kind of talking over some things to explain it. So I had the plan to go up there. I was waiting to hear back from Cole about playing Indian Pond. You know, if I was up there, I was going to play golf. And then I wake up and I rip my contact and I'm like, here we go again. So I try to stay mo motivated, you know, I had I had to go up to my bank up there. So I went up there, stopped the DW. I got a great opening filmed. Um, and I was like, all right, I'll go back to the storage unit. So I get back to the storage unit and I now I start 
peeling into bags. You know, my entire golf wardrobe is at the storage unit. You know, at home, I have a few shirts here and there, but like anything with the foot joy on the collar or anything with a giant logo, except for recently the ones that I got, um, I packed away. You know, I didn't, I, anything that would look like a golfer at a bar, I wasn't going to wear it. So I put it in the storage unit. So now I got to go through all these things. Well, it's a thousand degrees in there. I'm sweating. I'm sniffling, whatever. I take a break. I sit down. I start thinking and my wheels start turning. And I'm like, you know what? I've been ranting and raving about a mental health podcast. You know, yes, it's golf, but this is my mental health. This is my rant. This is my therapy. The thoughts that are going through my head right now are are too good to not talk about. So I talked about them, right? And yeah, I broke down a couple times. I'm human, right? It's crazy. The amount of like support that I've gotten for that and I'm like that's the least of my worries dude I don't care what people think like dude I broke down while I was talking about my dog while I was talking about my house like my past life that I you know was ruining myself because I was miserable and the thoughts of that now no I'm not going backwards and I'm not dwelling on the past but if I don't acknowledge it and I don't learn from it like I haven't my entire life it's been 40 years of the same cycle right it, it's you get up and down and you get up and down and every time you get off prednisone, you crash and then you're, you know, like you're miserable all the time because you're in pain. You try not to be, but like small talk, chit chatter to me is just tough. You know, I know when I'm in groups of people, somebody's going to say something I'm going to disagree with. And then I know somebody in the group's going to know I disagree and everybody's going to look at me. And wait for me to say something. And I'm the first to admit I'm guilty, especially when I've been drinking and I'm in a bad mood and I'm with people that I'm uncomfortable with. And in an uncomfortable situation, I'm usually going to let it rip and I'm just not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to get to the point. And if I offend somebody, I really don't care. You know, unless you're one of my close group of friends, I, I just whatever. Um. So, yeah, you know, groups of people are tough for me, you know, so it's it's one of those things where, you know, when I'm in a group, I try to kind of be a wallflower, I try to sit back and, and not talk, just kind of observe people. And, and unfortunately, like people take that sometimes as standoffish and it's not, you know. It is what it is. It's it's just me knowing to keep to myself because nobody likes my opinion anyway. So fuck it. You know, if you're going to call me an asshole, if you're going to ask my opinion, I'm going to give you my opinion. If you're going to turn around and call me an asshole, then don't ask my opinion. Right. It, I mean, it's it's so again, you know, it was what it was. One bedroom apartment, bulldog doesn't talk, will listen to me, you know, all all day, every day. That's the perfect life for me. I was happy, you know, and again, I'm not regretting changing that or or attempting to be normal, right? It is what it is. I had a blast, but that was always my goal is like a one bedroom condo down in West Palm Beach or something with a bulldog and a membership and, and just play golf, right? Work. As much as you can, as little as you can, make as much money as you can, but work and play golf. Um, Yeah, I mean, it it is what it is. It's, you know, I was happy alone, and I'll be happy alone again. I just have to remember to take care of myself. You know, I I live like a fucking degenerate. You know, when I met her, my mattress was on my floor. Actually, I take that back the box spring was on the floor and the mattress was on the box spring. But, you know, the roof of the apartment was a mess. I didn't have a couch. I had two recliners, one for me, one for the dog. I think three people other than her saw that apartment. You know, it wasn't a place that I brought people to. It wasn't a place I plan on bringing people to. It was kind of my escape, you know, just my cave. And I can't wait to get back to that. Um, we're getting there. There's some stuff going on behind the scenes I'm excited about. So 
you know, we'll find a place soon. I have to figure out where I'm going to be before I can find a place. And that was always the struggle with Bogey. You know, where am I going to go with Bogey, with a dog? You know, had I known he was going to pass away, I would have taken the money that I sold the house from and I would have found the condo of Matt immediately and bought it. You know, you, you don't know, but things change, life changes, kind of roll with the punches, right? So, you know, it, it is what it is, you know. Um, you know, I've never been physical or aggressive with any significant others. I've never cheated on any. It's not me. I'm not that dude. You know, I never really understood the cheating thing. Um, just why be with somebody? You know, I, I was, I'm open with everybody. Like, if I like you, I like you. I want to date you. If I don't, I don't. We're cool. We can hang out if you want to hang out, but it ain't going any further, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I've had girlfriends, but I never really got serious with anybody. I never really took anybody serious. So it is what it is, right? So, you know, I've never understood the whole being in a relationship if you're going to try to hook up with other people. I, I just, I don't know. You know, I'm, any of my friends will tell you I'm generous. You know, when I got, you got, you know, if I'm making money and have money to go to a Sox game or a Pats game or whatever, like, who wants to go? Let's go. And, you know, I'm going to take care of everybody that comes with me, you know, like, or if I can help you get gear or whatever, I'm that dude, you know, I, I always have been, I'm loyal. Um, you know, I'd do anything for a friend. You know, it's people don't like me cause I don't give a fuck. And I tell it like it is to people that I'm not friends with. Yeah. I like I, meeting new people for me is the worst thing in the world. Now, I'm not talking about business contacts, you know, working, fitting, saying hi on the golf course. I'm talking about a night out at the bar, sitting at a table, and somebody comes up and says, hey, meet my friend. It's so uncomfortable for me because I just, I don't want to get into where you're from. What are you doing? What's your opinion on that? You know, I, I just, I, it's just not me. I meet people on the golf course. That's where I meet people. I meet people at a, a blackjack table or a poker table. You know, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm. it's just not me. Give me a club. Give me a nightclub. Give me a VIP table with a bottle. I can sit there. The vibrations from the music just feels amazing on my arthritis all night. It's close enough quarters we can have a conversation, but it's loud enough that you're not going to ever get into a deep conversation. That's, that's me. Like, I, I just want to hide. I'm a hermit. I get it. Um, like I said, I took the, I, I tried normal. I'm not normal. I'm crazy. You know, like we went down to Pinehurst, they set up the tea sheet. Uh, she went to check us in. Hey, tea time for John Almeida. And I went to the bathroom and by the time I came out, she's panicked. They don't have us on the sheet. Oh, they had me down as crazy John. Like it's. It, it, I'm fucking crazy. I get it. I know. I don't give a fuck. But when have I ever done any of you wrong? Like, when have you ever had to question my morals or my ethics or, you know, I'm not a bad person. I just don't have time for fucking useless banter and chit chat. You make fun of me and you're at a three. I go to a 10. Leave me alone. Game, set, match. I admit it. I'm a lyrical assassin. It, it is what it is. And the more pain I'm in, the worst I am, and I know that. And when I'm on prednisone, the worst I am, and I know that. You know, the one thing I'm looking forward to this time is this is the first time I've ever been on an antidepressant while I'm doing any of this. So who knows? Maybe it helps. You know, I know the thought process right when I started taking it. It took about seven days, and on the golf course, it was like, holy shit. It went from, okay, where is this one going, to, okay, where are we hitting this? Like, Oh, it, like somebody flipped a switch in seven days. So it's, I, I'm a little excited, you know, this time to, to hopefully not crash. Um, but I don't dislike a lot of people, you know, we'll get into it at the bar. And then the next time I see somebody and they're like, Oh, you hate him. No, I don't. Why? Cause we argued once. Oh, well, he hates you. Okay. Cause he's a fucking snowflake. I, it you know it is what it is like it, i just it, when you're hurting and you're depressed and life is running you over like it's tough to smile all the time 
and you have to at work, and I get that. It's what I chose for a living. It's what I chose for a career. The funny one was one day somebody's like in my bay. He's like, you know you're in customer service, right? No, I'm not. No. You're coming to my bay because you know I'm the best. You're paying $150 an hour, and we got a lot of work to get done in a small space. I'm there to do a job. The guys up in the clubhouse and the guys that are selling you the product, they're the ones in customer service. Teachers are cheerleaders. I'm not a cheerleader. I'm a club fitter. I'm here to do a job. I have an hour to get it done. If by having we hit it off and we talk online, social media after, yeah, we'll become friends. And the next time you come in the bay, we'll... You have a little chit chat because we know each other. And while you're warming up, I already kind of know your tendencies. But your first time in the Bay, we got a lot to do in an hour. You know, I, I'm i sorry. The chit chat, you know, I didn't tell you fuck off, grab a club, you know. Hey, bud, how's it going? Go through a warm up just like you're in your uh, normal, you know, your normal routine. We'll, you'll get after it. You know, I'm going to ask you some questions while you're warming up. It's going to feel like I'm grilling you. I got to need to, I, I need to know what you want, what you're looking for out of the fitting, right? The guys that get that, we're off and running. They get it. It's about golf. You know, um, <clears throat> there's a teacher at my former club, actually, he's back and forth kind of between a couple different clubs that sent me a lot of business. And I think a lot of his customers kind of knew what they were getting into before they even got in the bay. So it was great, you know, um, but there were customers that came and that were beginner golfers that needed that pat on the back. I knew the difference. You know, if you're a handicap who already has a set of clubs, that we're there to do job. You know, if you're a 33 year old, I mean, a 33 handicap, 65 year old lady. Yes, we're there to do a job, but the experience is almost as much as important as the fitting. We're going to put you in ladies flex. It's just trying the different stuff and seeing what you like, you know? So again, that's the personality of it. And that's the roller coaster of my life. You know, try doing this on and off meds and on and off prednisone and in pain all the time and smiling all day during work. And then you get home and all you just want to do is shut off, you know, but the phone doesn't stop. You know, that was the other one, too. You know, um, a normal day for me was, you know, I woke up at five o'clock, took bogey outside, you know, was serenaded by the, the sound of snap, crackle and pop as I walked down the stairs and my feet and my knees cracked, you know, um, went outside, walked around the backyard with bogey, went inside. Now I'm all right. We got to get going, start showering, getting ready to go. You know, um, by 7 a.m., I'm in my car I and mean, I'm on the road and my phone's already ringing, you know, texts, calls, emails. It's going 7 a.m., you know, I'm there. So um, I usually worked five, eight to 12 hour days, but the phone was nonstop and it was Sundays and Mondays and it, it just... You know, you're receiving texts at 5.15 in the morning and whoever's there with you at the time looks at you and is like, who the fuck is texting you at 5 in the morning? And I'm like, I know, that is what it is. And then you get kicked out of bed and you go out and you start your daily routine. And it's like, you know, you, you try to play Monday with your buddies or with, you know, with your significant other and it's the music and it's you have the best speaker so they want you and blah, blah. And, hey, do you mind running the bed? Do you mind running the speaker today so I can leave my phone in the car? My battery's dying. All right, I'll run the speaker. I'll run the music. But then you you get like, oh, what are you doing, dude? You're on your phone working all day. Well, I asked you to leave the fucking phone in the car. You know what I mean? So it was just always, always something. It was never, you know, the phone. And I'm not talking about with people. I'm talking about with work. It's, you know, I, I don't blame the people that I was playing golf with on Monday that were, you know, we're partying, we're rocking, we're having drinks, and then all of a sudden the music stops because I have to answer a text that was kind of not urgent. Probably could have waited till Tuesday, but I look like a douche if I don't respond to it because it's they're standing right there waiting for an answer. So, you know, it, it just wasn't. It's one of those things, you know. Um, that's the job, and I get it, but it is and it isn't. I was forty hours a week in my bay. And then I was also running a golf shop doing a million dollars in sales 
or close to a million dollars in product. And I couldn't get anybody up there to do anything I asked them to do. So again, I, yeah, I was an asshole. I was, I came up screaming and yelling after the 25th time of asking somebody to do the same thing over and over and over again. You know, um, I saw the writing on the wall. I saw myself cracking. I tried to get out of there. I, I tried to stay there and only fit. They didn't see the value of $50,000 when they took half of my lessons all year. They said they don't make any money on the learning center. Well, okay. Well, we paid you a salary. No, I paid my salary. I paid it back in rent. And that's fine. I had no problem with it. I had no problem with my compensation. I had no problem. I just didn't want to deal with the golf shop anymore. It was too much with everything with the house and the home. And I, and uh, just, it was too much. It was just, I just, I needed out. So there it was, you know, it, it, it's, you know, and then you say, you get the people say, oh, well, why don't you turn off your phone? Well, my family's older. They have health issues, you know, um, yeah, that's, I have to have the phone on. So it, it is what it is, it, you know, I, I, I would never text anybody first until 9 a.m. Like, that's the way it is. And I usually don't text anybody first after 9 p.m. unless I know they're out or it's somebody that I, you know, I'm talking to or whatever that, that I know is up. I just don't get it. It wouldn't dream of me to ever text the golf pro that works at the club that I'm a member at at 10 p.m. on a Saturday night. I just, like, I unless it was friendly, playful banter or whatever like that. But if it's about work, are you kidding me? I just didn't get it. I, oh, well, I just thought I'd get a voicemail. Well, you didn't, you got me. <laughs> so it, it, it's always something, you know, I get it. I, John, get over it. I, I am, I'm moving on. That's kind of, you know, that's what this is. This is my rant. This is my vent. Um, it feels great to, to, to finally talk again. You know, I had, I'm not the dude that's ever going to text you first, you know, um, it's not me. When have you heard me text you anybody and say, you want to go grab a drink? No, I don't, I don't do it. Uh, it's usually, Hey, I'm doing this. Who wants to come? You know, um, Hey, I'm playing golf tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Who wants to play? You get a text, I'll play, great. I'll get us a tea time somewhere sick. You find two more. You know, I, I'm not going to be that dude. It's not me. It's never going to happen. It's not my personality. Um, but when I'm surrounded by people I'm comfortable with and we're having fun, I, I can be fun to be around, right? You know, um, I was class clown in my high school yearbook. You know, it's not like I was a miserable human being. You know, I said to I said to Kurt last night, I was laughing. I'm like, yeah, I don't really like people. I'm kind of more of an He's like, what? He's like, you're the most outgoing person I've ever met. Well, I was. Now, everybody's got a comment. And then when I defend myself and make a comment, I'm the bad guy. So it's like, whatever. If I laugh, I'm laughing at you. If you do something stupid and I don't laugh, I'm being an asshole. It, it just is what it is. So I just kind of stay in my lane. It's just where I want to be. And here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm awake again, I guess is the way to say it. You know, October, December. I didn't care. <laughs> the, the, the escapades and the shit shows. And I, I'm glad I didn't record anything. You know, I'm glad I, I kind of put my phone away for most of it. Um, there's probably some pictures out on the on the, the group chat. You know, I had a few buddies that were in a group chat. A couple of them, they didn't like what I had to say to them. They they were able to say what they want to me. And then when I told them they were pussies for not standing up for themselves, you hurt my feelings. So we're not friends anymore. But anyway, I'm sure there's some pictures out there of me and my disasters sitting at a poker table at four in the morning or a blackjack table or... Draft Kings betting on a World Cup that I had no clue what was going on. Um, whatever. At that point, I didn't care. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm simple, dude. It's I'm easy. Just uh, kind of leave me alone. Like, don't poke the bear, right? If I'm in a mood, 
Just let me be. Just let me. Yes, I need my body needs extra time to rest. It does. I, there's simple chores that you think are simple chores after a 12 hour day of work is a fucking disaster for me. Yes, they have to get done. I understand. I was wrong my whole life. Literally my whole life. My bedroom, my dorm room in college, my apartment in college, my house when I lived in, sat in North Carolina with the guys. Um, yeah, I'm a slob. I get it. I know. But what you don't understand is bending down to pick shit up, there's pain involved in that for me and if I don't need to do it and it's not urgent I admit I drag my feet I you know I get it Uh, and I understand the people that don't want to be around me and don't want to live with me and don't want to live with that I understand that too I have no hard feelings it is you know it is what it is like I said a, a one bedroom condo by myself with a dog got me and my buddy <laughs> you know um so we've actually already been reaching out to the breeders a little bit. We're going to get birdie. You know, we're going to get a female this time. We're going to get birdie. So it's coming. Um, there's some things behind the scenes going on, and one of them will actually help the podcast a little bit and have some golf content with it. And they were all on board when I talked to them a little bit. They thought it was even a cooler feature to have a dog involved in it. So, um, yeah, so we we're, were coming. We're coming back. Don't worry. We're trying to search projects that are kind of golf adjacent. You know, I don't want to be back standing on the range anymore. Do I look that raccoon eyed? <laughs> um, it's kind of funny. My eyes and my hair and my eyebrows get so bleached in the sun when I go out. Um, sorry, I got off track. See, butterfly flew by ADD. Um, but anyway, um, what was I going to say? I was just saying something. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I guess maybe I was saying don't poke the bear, you know. Um, I'm simple. Just don't poke the bear, especially when I'm in a mood. You know, my body takes longer to recover than most people's, you know. I know that. I get it. And I know it can be frustrating for the people around me when I don't want to do certain things. I get it. You know, but just when I'm just understand, you know, like it's one 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 example with a friend and I'm not even going to get into who it was or what it was hey we're all going skiing you want to go no why not I don't like cold weather activity well that's an easy way to just say I don't like to go outside in cold or whatever and they didn't like that answer but the truth is I don't want to say, I don't want to go skiing. I'm a pussy. And have you seen me walk down a flight of stairs? I have to use the wall and I have to use the fucking wall in front of me to stop. You think I want to go to the top of the mountain and go as fast as I can and see how fast I can get to the bottom? And then once I'm at the bottom, trust my legs and knees to stop? It just, and then they got all pissed off at me. Well, yeah, we always try to invite you guys. Dude, like, what do you, I mean, do you think that's fun for me? Do you think I'm going to have a friendly response to that? You know, I get another buddy, you know, uh, former buddy, another former buddy. Yep, I'm the bad guy because I'm always the bad guy when I stand up for myself. This dude invites me to his wedding on Long Island. So I drive all the way down to Long Island, not on medication. I don't even think I've been diagnosed rheumatoid arthritis at this point. So, Three hours, four hours in a car, I drive down there. By the time I get down there, my feet are literally like fucking bowling balls. Like, they're so swollen, no chance. You know, next day, you go to the wedding. Yeah, I had Jesus sandals on. Okay, well, of all people, he knows my situation, my feet. I shouldn't have gone to the wedding. You're right. I should have stayed home. No, I'm glad. Well, then why are you fucking busting my balls for the next 20 years? You think it's a fun conversation for me to have? Like, so, yeah, you want to talk about resi days? You want to talk about being disrespectful, this, that, and the other thing? Whatever, dude. All I walked over and said, dude, it's six more holes. Let's just shut the fuck up and play golf. Because all you had done for four straight days is fucking berate me because you were playing bad. Like, Okay, so you stormed off. Bye. Bye, Rihanna. 
Like, are you kidding me? Like, and I'm always the bad guy in these situations because I take the bait and I stand up for myself, right? So that's where we're trying to move forward right now. And I know I just kind of got off path a little bit and got a little ranty. But again, it just shows, like, I'm in the, like, yes, I'm still processing some of these things that piss me off. Especially on a night like tonight where I'm sitting out here crashing off prednisone back in the car where it all started, not even planning on doing an episode. And now I look up and I'm 40 minutes in, right? So again, I can't wait to get playing golf because these rants become fun, sarcastic rants about situations on the golf course. And from what I've seen in the comments and the following and this, that, and the other thing, you guys like it, you know, it's, it's fun stuff. I mean, you listen to the Red Sox, right? I think Kevin Millar, honestly, I wasn't a huge fan at first. I think he's awesome in the booth now. And I think him and Wake together are great. When they all start going talking golf and shirt matches and things like that, you know, I I think it's pretty cool. You know, that's stuff that I can incorporate into the podcast. You know, Um, I've I've been fortunate enough to caddy for Wakefield a couple times. And then last year I, I fit him for wedges, you know, um, last week when I was at Thorny Lee, him and a couple guys were out there playing Thorny. I, I, unfortunately I didn't get close enough to go say hello to him, but would love to know if he's still got the wedges in the bag and if he, if he's enjoying the changes that we made. Right. But again, you go to, you, you talk about, you're watching the Red Sox and now Millar and those guys and they start, they're talking golf and golf is swag. Now the 40 somethings like myself, Gen X, this is who we are. We, like I said, we talked about it. It's who we are. We, you know, we created the hip hop stations. It, it's, um, it, it's our generation. We're here now. We're the spenders. We're the designers. We're the, the, the content consumers. We're the ones that they're trying to appease, you know, with TV rights and things like that. You know, I'll tell you what, not getting a dude, that's been playing for 10 years, 20 years out on tour. I don't even know the stats. I wasn't even thinking about talking about them, but not getting Ricky Fowler winning for my generation, not getting that on TV. That's a big miss. You know, like we came up with him. Like that's, you know, yes. Some we like a lot of the kids that are a little younger than me were the kids dressing in orange. You know, I was the 20 something at the bar chairing for him. So guy makes a huge comeback and you don't get it on TV. Like what? how bad is our TV deal? You know, so there's so much going on, um, you know, that is content, you know, think about it. I just got 40,000 views on a TikTok about me walking through my basement, talking about the graveyard of my gear, 40,000 views. Like it's, I wouldn't have expected to get 40,000 views for another year on anything, on any sport. And I know tech t- TikTok is a little kind of monopoly money, but 40,000 views of a basement full of junk and people don't think there's a a market for a, a golf hip hop gear podcast. I mean, come on. I just got to get up and running. I just got to get motivated and I got to start calling people and get people on and talking, talking swag. Right. I mean, I have the contacts. I'm texting with them back and forth. It's just been a nightmare scheduling. It's just, again, I'm not the dude to text first and it's a challenge for me with the podcast. It's just, it's a scheduling nightmare. So it's, I got to figure this out. Um, I got to get out of my shell and start reaching out to people and, um, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to post this, but tonight's Saturday night. I'll probably edit it tomorrow and post it Sunday night into Monday. Um, but I know the Thorny thing will be done this week, 100%. I promise. I know I, yeah, I have it done, but it kind of looks a little amateurish. But, I mean, I, I get it. I'm amateur. But I want to clean it up a little bit. There's some things that I can do. And, guys, we're getting there. Keep sharing. Don't forget. I'm, I haven't changed anything. I'm still giving away a driver at 1,500 followers. So, um, yeah, we're at like 1,200, getting in close to 1,200. So we got a few more to go. Share, 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 and we'll get this thing out there. We'll get get somebody dialed in for a new Cobra driver. Um, 
yeah, a couple things, you know, other little small things. You know, you're going to have different opinions as adults, right? Listen, you sit here and say, John, why do you keep talking about the same stuff? What's this? Blah, blah, blah. Golf, golf, golf. Da, 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 da. Dude, what do you think you sound like sitting at the bar talking politics? Like, no, it is what it is. You can't change anything. At least the stuff I'm talking about, if they, they commit to it and want to do it, we can make some changes. You know, politics, you live in a mass, you live in Massachusetts, but sorry, you live in a democratic state. They're going to win every election. And again, I'm independent, so I'm not going to get into it, but you're not going to change anything. Ranting and raving to a minimum wage employee that doesn't care. I get it. This is what I, that's why this is my space. Why do you think I never sit with anybody when I go in the clubhouse? You think I don't like any of them guys? Of course I like some of them guys. I don't like all of them. But I'd much rather sit at the bar by myself than listen to two hours of Donald Trump, right? It's just, I just don't care. So this is my space. If you don't like my space, I get it. Don't listen. I understand. But once you leave my space, especially if you shut the door on the way out to the guys chirping back in, I'm good. I appreciate it. I appreciate the help. I'm good. I don't need help. I don't need professional help. I don't need, I'm good. Um, so yeah. All right, guys. I know it's got a little ranty, but it's been an awesome couple weeks. I can't wait to share like what's going on behind the scenes, some job opportunities and things like that. Like I said, we're looking golf adjacent kind of, you know, I, I still have some talents in the golf business that I want to, you know, maximize, but at the same time, we got to do what's right for, um, for me, you know, I got to remember, I can't live a normal life. You know, I can't work the 80 hour weeks, not take time for myself, not sleep. I can't do it. I'm not healthy enough to do it. So going forward, it's, you know, it, it is what it is. We got to, we got to find a job and a career that, that fits that mold. So got a couple things lined up. I can't wait to see where this thing goes and what happens. So I don't want to get too much into it because like everything, things fall through. So, um, but I am 100% excited. I know a, a lot of you guys were concerned on Thursday, was it? Wednesday. I don't remember. I don't even remember what day it was. Um, Thursday. I appreciate the concern. You have nothing to worry about anymore. Yeah, you probably did a few months ago, but guys, thanks for tuning in. This is about to be a golf podcast. I can't wait. I'm healthy. Um, I may play golf tomorrow. Uh, I haven't really reached out to anybody. It's 1030. I might throw up a post on Facebook in the morning who needs one, but definitely by Monday I'm playing somewhere. So I can't wait. I'm excited. Um, yeah, it was just a setback. It was one of those, but it was a real moment that I'm sure it was a conversation that we've all had with ourselves in the mirror. You know, um, you start thinking about setbacks. How did I get myself here? What's going on? That's all it was. It just did it publicly. You know, I have no shame. I could care less. I really don't. You want to talk shit? You want to clown me? Oh, you're a pussy. Okay. Okay. Tough guy. You know, I, <laughs> whatever. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, again, I hope you guys realize, yes, some of this is dark and it's deep and it's sarcastic. Um, but I do struggle with some things, you know, you, this times where I'm sitting at a bar when I'm on prednisone or in a bad mood where it couldn't, it might even be the person I'm with that's talking to me about something else, like a buddy or something. And I'm like, focused on the guy to my right that I don't even know. And I'm like, man, why do I want to hit this dude so bad? And it's like, I know it's not me. It's not my personality. It's my, it's the drugs, but pulling yourself in and reining yourself in, you know, it, you know, that, when I start crashing, like I am right now off bread and zone, that's when the suicidal thoughts come in and things like that. But fortunately right now, most of the time when I do get off prednisone and get those bad thoughts, I'm 
in a good mood because I took the shot that day. And by the time it wears off, I'm good. So I anticipate tomorrow waking up with a smile on my face, ready to go, ready to play some golf. Like I said, I'm on a new medication for my crazy, crazy. So let's see what goes on. We'll see if we figure it out. Who knows? But until next time, guys, I, keep liking, keep sharing, keep commenting. You know, I, I, I don't even care if it's the same 10 people. I almost forgot, and I'm glad I kind of caught this at the end of the episode. One of the cool moments out of Tony Lee the other day when we recorded, um, we were recording on the sixth hole, and there was a group playing 10, and obviously I had told people on social media that I was going to go to Tony Lee. So it, it, they saw Rich out there. I'm assuming it's not like, oh, you're famous. But it was a pretty cool moment. You know, I hit my shot putting the club back in the bag and, and the, the kid from across the fairway, a couple fairways over. Hey, John, love the podcast, bud. Keep going. It was a pretty cool moment. And Rich was had my phone. He was recording the shot. He had already turned the recording off. I looked at him. I was like, please tell me you got that. And Rich just started laughing. He goes, no, I didn't. So we don't know who it was. Neither one of us could tell. You're over there on 10 in the shades at Thorny Lee. So to the Thorny Lee member that yelled, John, let's go. Love the podcast. Or I don't remember exactly what you said. For anybody else that yells, I want to hear some let's goes out there. Let's go. Um, but anyway, to that member that, that yelled across the fairways, I appreciate the support. I love it. Go to Rich's office tomorrow. Give him your address. Tell him who you are. I got some swag to send your way. We got a hoodie, T-shirt. We're going to hook you up. We're going to take care of the supporters, the people that support us. So if you're watching, you said you're a listener. If you're still watching, you got some swag coming your way. Let's go!